Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, and uh, we have a very, I think, a very profound broadcast today. This is normally uh, the type of broadcast we would uh, record and place on our Patreon channel, uh, but because of Steve Jackson uh, putting out on his platform this type of information, I wanted to kind of examine some of the things that he shares on his video uh, and then share with you some of these insights that are over on Patreon already. Uh, and uh, I think you might find this very interesting. And some of the information we've already shared on Israeli News Live YouTube or Israeli News Live I Connect. Uh, but, and you're going to get to actually see a clip of uncensored information that may very well explain from a German scientist, Harold Kautz Villa how the, the events that are happening with these extraterrestrials, how this is actually occurring, uh, you're going to get to find that out. Uh, of course, Steve gives a, a possibility of CERN, and there, uh, there is, of course, that does uh, raise the, the, the bar, you might say, on, on that information as well. I want to first play a little bit of clip here from Stephen Jackson, what he's saying here. And he gets into this. I'm gonna, we're going to play several different clips. Uh, he's talking about CERN. He's talking about the cracks in the magnetosphere. He's talking about the auroras. He's talking about uh, these orbs or alien craft or whatever that are just coming up out of the earth and appearing. Um, so let's listen into this. And strangely enough, before that happened, you didn't hear about this, did you? I'm asking the question because this happened this year, right before CERN fired up remember there was a crack in the magnetic field for about 14 hours well guess what else y'all guess what else has happened there is another crack that recently just happened again and so whole in earth's magnetic field cracks open for six hours sparking rare pink auroras letting something in that we don't know that's been let in. Yep. All right, now, a couple of things I want to share with you on that right there. Uh, it was also on Newsweek. Cracks are appearing in Earth's magnetic field as the equinox approaches. Now, that came out back in, uh, what was it, September? Yeah, September 13th of 2022, when they actually put out their own uh, article there on Newsweek so it's not something new and what's fascinating is that this was reported in September now those of you let me just see if I can figure out which video it's on here I got to find the right one uh, that's the uncensored version of the interview of Harold that I've never released the full interview, but that's not what I'm looking for. Let me find the right spot here. Um, it's another interview that I did with Harold, and I believe I believe it's this one right here. Um, just a moment there. I, oh gosh, I'm getting them all mixed up here. Um... Pop that out. Okay, here we go here. This, all right, now this one's on Patreon. This is the interview we did with Harold over on Patreon. And Magnetic Field may collapse this year. This was, if, if you'll notice, was, we posted this May the 3rd. And Harold was already talking about as early as the fall of the year, and he mentioned September onward that we could start seeing these disruptions or, as he put it, a collapse in the magnetosphere. Now, I checked in with the scientists there in Washington to see what their thoughts were on this. They also are aware of this and they said that it, there's a possibility, but then again, they said it could be in the next hundred years. Uh, we've been watching it for some time. but. Some of the things that Harold says in this interview here are, are just shocking to begin with. And I'm going to play that clip for you here in just a moment. Uh, but as I mentioned to you, the uh, 
also the auroras let me find it. here we go right there that's exactly what Stephen Jackson was reporting about uh, an explosion of extreme rare pink auroras recently lit up the night sky above Norway after a solar storm slammed into the earth and ripped a hole in the planet's magnetic field. The breach enabled highly energetic solar particles to penetrate deeper into the atmosphere than normal, triggering the unusual colored lights. Now they blamed it on a solar storm that actually came in. All right, let's listen to what Steve says on this. Yeah, wait just a second here. We should have Steve talking. So there is actual footage of what's going on here. These things, whatever it is that came through the field, we honestly don't know right now. But we do know that when the field opens up, even the scientists that came out and said, well, that's like some portal opening up. Y'all do realize that, right? And here's the strange thing. CERN is now saying, well, we got to shut down all of a sudden. So imagine this. CERN is like all of us. And CERN is talking about shutting down, and that's on this uh, Euronews.next. Uh, and they're saying on here that it is due to an energy crisis that's hitting uh, Europe. Now, and that may be true. Uh, we can't we can't say for sure why CERN is, is shutting down. Uh, we do know that there is a serious energy crisis that is happening over there uh, as a result of the war in Ukraine. And of course, Ukraine has you know five of the largest uh, nuclear reactors that does power a lot of Europe. Uh, and if Europe is having to take and pick up uh, the load of these plants being shut down. Uh, that could affect uh, the the you know what CERN is able to do. So I, ca I can't really say on that. Now I will agree with Stephen. It does CERN is opening up portals. I've shared that with you guys in many videos, both here on Israeli News Live, uh, also over on our Patreon platform. We've shared a lot of that type of information about what CERN actually does, what it can do, and. Um, so, you know, that's just that that's so, so much truth in all of that. Uh, but I did find it interesting that Newsweek was reporting that as well. And, uh, you know, and of course, when they talk about these breaches in the magnetics, uh, magnetic uh, field there of the earth there, could it be that it's breaches in that or could it be, as Harold is going to say to you here in just a moment here, you know, we have uh, a, a magnetic uh, field that is breaking down. There again, this is the one that's over on Patreon there. Let's, let's play a clip of that here for you so you guys can hear what Harold had to say. Maybe before we get into the, to the issue about uh, Venom, uh, you had written me an email and it was very, very uh, captivating for me because you mentioned about um, a magnetic pole shift and I know that with the uh, people I know in Washington they have already been saying this to me for some time and I've shared that with our listeners and yet some of these things are very difficult for people to wrap their minds around and and of course what causes it how often does it happen and how's that going to affect us on the planet because I'm hearing all kinds of bad things and sometimes I just don't even know if I'm going to even share half of what I know because can people even grasp it or believe it, Harold? Maybe we can start with a, with a general understanding of what happens. Um, it's mostly about geometry. If, if you look at the trajectory of the sun, it's spiraling around the arm of the galaxy. And there are a couple of general mechanisms. One is that whenever it is crossing the uh, equatorial plane, the axis of the tra tra trajectory of the sun goes parallel to the main axis of the Milky Way. It happens twice in a cycle. Whenever it's going through the equatorial plane, the axis go parallel. And this is kind of, or close to parallel, this is kind of a unique 
uh, transfer the um, field physics to entangle on quantum level. So it's like a recharging point. Every isolated system connects to the core to recharge everything with energy. And this is why we see, for example, the color of the sun go brighter over the last five years, because it's recharging. This is one thing happening, and we are at the moment exactly in a, a transit through the equatorial plane. It takes like four, three, four years until it's fully done. Um, there's a little tolerance in the angles to have that effect, but it's happening. I mean, look at the sun, how it flies, it's basically a trajectory, and the planets are spinning around it, so it's like something to pull a cork if you take the full picture when you see the motion pattern of earth for example this so is how it goes and the other thing is um, the sun is plasma part of this earth is liquid inside it's in a plasma state it's working like a huge dynamo and those two are also entangled with each other so that basically the axis and the motion patterns and an energy transfer from the sun plasma to the earth plasma is going from to different scales of a fractal quantum system right um, so this is the general setup so um we have one thing this is recharging this is happening now and another thing that needs to happen every now and then is that this is the um, important part. If you look at the internal, for example, of the Earth, um, it's like a rotate. It's a rotating system, but the axis is slowly shifting. It has its own inertia. It tries to stabilize the axis, but then we go around the screw, and the axis is tilted continuously. So the, the real position of the axis. Is always a lagging behind a little bit the actual resonance point where it should be this is why the the magnetic pole and uh, the rotational pole are not aligned because it's always lagging behind right and this needs a correction every now and then it's like like with these toys you know when you have the spinning thing yo -yo. Yeah. Yo -yo, not yo-yo uh, the one that On has a stick yeah yeah um, when you see it tumbling before it falls, you can see all, all forms of weird motion patterns happening before it collapses. And this is when you look at the geographic position of the North Pole at the moment, you can see exactly this happening. It's not like a stable thing moving somewhere. <laughs> it's kind of losing it at the moment. It's doing 50, 100 kilometers um, a year in, in uh, moving somewhere so you can see that the system is destabilizing uh, exponentially this is something that would hint to uh, having um, a reset in order um, happening quite soon just okay. from observing motion patterns once once this happens Harold what effect because at some point I guess it's got to flip and so what, I guess what my curiosity is, with the nuclear physicist that's a good friend of mine in the Pentagon tells me that we're going to see a large loss of life in 2022. And I, and I already know people know from, say, for example, you talk about, you know, the, the, the shots, the kill shots people are getting, they've got a large loss of life just from that in itself. But mm -hmm. this is totally different, though, is are the effects of this magnetic pole shift going to cause disturbances on the Earth that could also maybe contribute to what they're saying that there is, to, or what, what I'm being told, that there is a large number of different factors that are going to be happening globally, planetarily, that, it, that it's going to cause this. And they're getting the storms and everything else. But is that part of what this causes? I, I think the main factor is that uh, in the days of shifting, there's no magnetic shielding for the planet, so the aurora borealis will go down to the equator. And people will 
possibly spend all night outside to enjoy the beautiful view. But without that shielding, there's a quite high probability for having very strong electromagnetic fields on ground level. And what, I mean, this is now not, we do not have data from scientific research, but there are so that just kind of gives you an idea of what the what is expected, and of course the magnetosphere is major major player in what's going to happen, uh, and even in this large loss of life, besides uh, uh, the problem that we know that people have had uh, from you know what's gone on over the last couple of years. Uh, we've also we also know that just in the war itself in Ukraine there has been a tremendous loss of life, uh, both of civilian of soldiers. Uh, it, th this this war here in Ukraine has had a heavy uh, toll on life. In fact, there was an article that had just came out recently. I haven't even reported on it as of yet. Uh, a strike uh, by. Um, well, it was U.S. Uh, U.S. technology on Russian forces that had just came in, and uh, a unit of over 400 men. Out of that, over 300 were killed. Uh, so that's just one strike, and so the losses are extremely heavy on both sides. I, I forget what percent, a very high percentage of the Ukrainian military have all died in this war or have been wounded. So, and then of course now they're talking about, you know, between now and the end of the year, the war could step up even more, and so we would end up seeing a much larger loss of life uh, throughout Europe. So the situation is very, very bad. Sorry I got all this noise in the background. I've got this little little lab, but my, we got our daughter for her birthday, and uh, she seems to hang around with me, and uh, she is into everything, and now she's dragging a box across the floor. So it gets quite noisy at times. I apologize for that. Anyway, let's move on again. I want to look at some more things what Steve is saying here in his video. So let me get past the CERN part of this video here and let's pick up in another section. People seeing stuff drop out of the sky and like it's dropping objects out of it. And then people are getting nauseous and stuff like that because of these objects also are coming up from the ground. So weird stuff going on here but you understand that when the field opens up it's a whole nother reality opening up above our heads i mean if it came out and said yeah we it's hidden portals in the earth's magnetic field once they open up you don't know when they're going to open up they open up without warning and when the magnetic field does this there are specific things that are literally happening above us so is it a coincidence that the earthquake just went off just a couple days before Let me kind of fast forward a little bit here. To the clip, though, that we was just talking about. And this is the clip right here. So this clip shows something in the sky. Maybe it's some type of, it, it just dropped something out of it like an orb, though. Look at that. It, it just dropped one, two of them. You can I actually mean, see. Let me story, back up. Right? Uh, I don't know. I'm sure Steve orb, probably though. saw this that. there. You notice that little V-looking section in that particular craft there? It's almost like a door opened up on that thing. Out of it like an orb, though. There we go. You can barely catch it there. Uh, but Steve talks about how that this stuff here, and it drops that orb, goes down to the earth there, and then uh, actually is going into the earth. It's almost like it's a portal there. And uh, I, I'm going to share a couple of things with you on this. And I really, uh, you know, Again, my hat's off to Steven Jackson. He's doing amazing work there on his channel, uh, JWTV. Uh, he jumped a couple of thousand subscribers after we had him on. Uh, I, I encourage you to subscribe. I mean, I, I really think he does amazing work. I, I like Steven Jackson a lot. And uh, I know some people, you know, were commenting. He's, you know, new age and stuff. Listen, everybody's got their own beliefs and stuff i don't condemn people for what they believe so please you know glean glean what you can from the information people share i mean it's just like you go to your doctor we don't necessarily know what our doctors all believe or our dentist or whatever the case may be uh but you know uh gosh sorry about that guys i am dealing with dog here um 
and she's getting much bigger so she just wants to rule the whole room here while well, I'm recording and she just bit me again and so I'm getting some pretty bad rough scars on my hands because she's wanting to chew and bite everything right now and she's really having a field day with the left arm anyway <laughs> so this is not going to be easy all right all right she wants you guys to see her so let me bring her up here we'll introduce this is charcoal right here the crazy dog that loves me too much i think she should love my daughter more than me anyway all right charcoal back down so now if i can try to finish this video here without being bit all the time by the dog um Let's see. I'm going to have to pause just for a minute, guys. I got to get her out of the room. All right. Any rate there, I apologize there. Yes, uh, that that little lab boy is a rascal. So I had to get her out of the room here. Uh, all right. So, so Steve is talking about how these orbs are coming in and out through the earth. Now, I'm going to share some information with you here. One, I want to take you to uh, an interview that I did with a friend of ours there out of California. And if you notice here on the video, you can see the orb here uh, that she photographed. Now I'm kind of zoomed in on it in this one here. And um, this thing here, and I don't know if I actually, if I, if I could find the actual place where, um, and I can't tell you her actual name, but anyway, uh, I think we give her a name on the interview here. I think it was Shelly or something like that. But um, uh, the, she describes at one point how the orb just just like goes right into the earth. Uh, and it was believed to be that it's actually a secret base there. Well, what, listen in just a little bit. Of course, I was able to, because uh, of the fact that at the time I was in uh, Dulce, New Mexico, I was already with uh, someone from Washington that's part of the Secret Space Program who was able to confirm that what uh, was in these photographs is real, and uh, it is near a base there uh, that is known for alien activity because they work with our military. Uh, and Shelly shared with us very, very interesting uh, story that happened to her uh, where she lives at there. And we wanted her to come on to share with you tonight. California, we don't want to say this is happening. How did Three years ago, I just, I live in, a, in an area that does not have a lot of light pollution. And I started noticing things in the sky and I thought, well, this is strange. And I've seen a lot of things which I don't, probably, I didn't know at the time was you know, our military. Um, kind of fast I forward had, as we go here real quick. I had I had seen some things and I started sharing with one of my neighbors and she started seeing the same thing. And so we're talking back and forth and next thing you know, a military drone shows up and I knew that was a warning to me that I need to be three weeks after that drone this showed up. This is the drone. And, and this also uh, has been confirmed by people in D.C. that it is actually a drone. But, you know, she also talks about how the, the, some of these light uh, craft change in shape. They change in color. Uh, and that's when it's not zoomed in. Way, way back you can see that orb there. Uh, that's more of a close-up. That's where it actually begins to change the shape. Now, if you look at the way that shape looks there... And you go back over here to Stephen Jackson, the video that uh, he was sharing with someone there, again, had kind of a weird looking shape as well, uh, very similar to the uh, one that we have here with Shelly in the interview we did with her. I was trying to see, because uh, we shared different images, and I don't, I know I didn't share everything that she shared with me there, uh, but we have... We yeah, it looks like I okay yeah I did not share everything by by any means. Different though photos on different days though too. That was a different one where the arrow points to it there. Um, so but anyway, that's just to kind of show you that. Now I have been in many 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 uh, meetings over the years, and we have talked about exactly what Steve talks about here on here where these uh, spacecraft 
We have, there, in fact, there's one, the Pentagon has a video footage of it where it's going down and just looks like it's going to run right into the air, like it's going to crash, and then suddenly it just disappears. By the way, if you see a bunch of scars on my hands, that's that. That's that little lab. I, I got thin skin, so I, I've got a lot of wounds from that rascal. But anyway, all right. I want to share, though, with you real quick, and this we'll do this in closing here. Well, actually, no, I'm going to do one more thing before closing. I want to share uh, Patrick Lancaster some updates there on the war there in Ukraine. Um, uh, no, I may not do that here. I'll, I'll, I'll say that for a different video. But, but I want to share Uncensored. Now, this was the one on Patreon, the interview we did there on Patreon there. And it is, uh, I don't know the full length of it, but I know it's like a half hour long there. So you might want to watch that. And there is a lot, a lot of good information. I was just trying to find this interview here. And I was blown away at some of the interviews we've done on Patreon, uh, especially in light of all this type of information. So I'm sure it'd be a blessing for those of you that want to get on there. Link will be in the description below. But I want to take you to the uncensored version uh, that is here over on iConnect. Um, we did an interview over an hour long. And so I'm going to play a little clip for you here. This is very, very in-depth to, to, to really to be able to grasp what Harold is going to say. But it really explains why we have so many different perceptions and views on the earth itself, whether people believe the earth is flat, whether people believe the earth is hollow, whether people believe that the earth is like the way science has taught us. It's a solid core with a melting lava in the center of the earth. Um, and even with my friends that are flat earthers, I actually have been able to better understand why you believe the way you do. Um, just from something that Harold said in this interview. Uh, but it also, if you really will allow yourself to think and, and, and grasp the information he's going to say, it will explain to you how aliens can go interdimensional. Uh, how that they're... And, and I've done interviews over on Patreon. Uh, in fact, I did one where I'm, I got information from a, a former high-ranking officer, a Navy SEAL, and he literally talked about, and he was able to do it when the alien walked through a solid rock into this place, this, this other realm where his commander was waiting, and the SEAL didn't think he could do it, but he did. He walked right through it as well. Now, did they open the portal or whatever? I don't know the answer to all of this, but, um, and, and I was able to confirm about that particular meeting uh, of someone that knew about it as well, besides the Navy SEAL that gives the report. So, and I'm talking about a very high ranking officer as a Navy SEAL. Um, let me play this though. And, and then I'm going to just comment a little bit on it as we close on there. And I apologize. The audios are very, very difficult for me to get good audio with my computer for some reason. So I'm doing the best I can to make sure you can hear everything the best. So you can hear as well. Listen in. I talked about, we, you know, he's told me that before. He said, like, in the case of the Earth, he said the Earth is not really, he said there is lava flows. He said it's like rivers of lava that go through the core of the Earth and stuff. But he said it's not the way you're taught in science. It's not like there's some mag big magma ball in the middle and everything. He said parts of the earth, there's rock parts, there's water parts, there's lava. And he said, and of course, there's entrances in the uh, Antarctica that goes into the center of the earth. Um, you know, he said there's all kinds of things that they never tell you in, in science. Uh, and now this brings me to a question for you as well, though, because he said this to me. He said it won't be long before the Arctic will melt to a point where the people will know what's really there. He said, because it's been hidden under the ice all these years. And he said, so we never, we, we keep it secret like that. He said, but it will be known. And so I'm wondering if the events that you've been describing are not contributing to the melting of the Arctic as well. It's a slow process. We don't see it at this scale. It goes kilometer by kilometer. Right. 
So it may, it may take too long to know for sure. We, we may not yeah. know that for another 15, 20 years, or even 50 yeah. years, or 100 years. Yeah. Yeah, just just one, one thing to contribute this entire discussion about uh, wh how our globe is actually built, whether we have hollow earth or um, what do we find on what level when we drill. Um, most of the discussions I find a bit fruitless because they consider us living in 3D. We do not. We, we live in 4D. Right. So it depends. I want to make sure you caught that right there. The Herald said a lot of this is based on what we're taught. We live in 3D, but he said we don't. We actually live in 4D, four-dimensional. Okay, so just keep that thought in mind, and let's go a little bit further. Depends on what path you take in 4D to determine what you find. Um, so if you stay on the same, let, let's call it, energy density you have on the surface and you look down there, I guess you will find exactly what the standard models are predicting. Okay, this is where, especially as a Christian, uh, and me, my, you know, and I say as a Christian myself, I'm, look, I'm examining this to myself as a, as a believer, um, and I can understand where a lot of people, they get fearful because he talks about a energy level. Um, and that is, of course, you get into a lot of New Age talks about this, but Harold is also speaking from a scientific uh, perspective. But as I'm listening to this, you have to understand, I know, and you know as a believer as well, that the prophets, uh, and not just prophets, so many things have been done, uh, so many miraculous things on miraculous levels biblically. Uh, we had Philip, who literally goes from one place to another place within seconds. How did he do it? Uh, you have uh, uh, the Mount Transfiguration. You have, uh, you know, how did the prophets see what they saw? Um, there's a lot of supernatural things that took place biblically. Uh, you know, we see Elijah taken up by a chariot of fire. Uh, we, we see, e even in the case of... Um, well, I won't get into every single aspect because my mind starts uh, start for, forgetting little details that I want to bring out, so I'll, I'll just wait on it. But there's a lot of miraculous things that happen in the Bible that are just totally unexplainable. Jesus walking on water, for example. Uh, that's another one. And uh, when Peter, Peter did it for just a second, but then he sinks. Um, so keep those things in mind. I want you to listen just a little bit further, because what I'm looking at here is how the spacecraft is able to go through what uh, for us is a solid Earth. Listen in. If you go in and you, you, you higher your energy density with the point you are in at that point, I would expect rather to have something like like in the mythologies that you go to you need to dive through an ocean that are the waters below and then you will find a different space-time sheet with another world in it so so um, um, uh, there is enough room for mythology in the 4d universe Okay, so now I'm not into mythology, not into any of these things here, but I still understand the concept of what he's saying. What I, again, what I look for when you have interviews like this, what we can glean from, especially in light of the fact of we're finding out things people are recording that do not make sense you know, by the law of physics of what we know or understand, how do these orbs just suddenly go right into the earth? They're gone, or they come out of the earth. Let's listen in a little bit more of what some of the things Steve says here, and I'll, I'll elaborate on that. Out of it like an orb, though. Look at that. It, it just dropped one, two of them. Oh, and I'm going to link you to a story, right, that links to this. So 
the reason why I say it links to this, and here's another view of it, if you check it out a little bit closer and just look at it, they're zooming in, it dropped something towards where we're at. This video came out October 31st, okay? So this was before the magnet, ma magnetic, the magnet, that, 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 the magnetic field opened up. Before the, that, 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 can't even say it. Before the magnetic field opened up, and also this was before the, that, 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 all that stuff happened. Basically, anyway, before the earthquake happened. So the thing is, is moving into this story here, I want you to see um, right now, WV witness six days ago say pulsating orb came out of the ground creating nausea. Now this person reported this even back May 29th. So they had a video, but we're going to just That, that one right though, now. what he's talking about was in West Virginia, right here in the good old United States. Um... And it just come up out of the ground, creating nausea, uh, portals, things like that. We talk about portals. But then again, as Harold is talking about, the energy of density. And it could be that, that these fallen angels are on a different um, level, a plane, uh, that allows them or their spacecraft or whatever to do things that are that is beyond our understanding um, and so I, that's why I found what he said interesting uh, even in light of biblical accounts of things that took place you know I mean I mean granted think about it Jesus was walking on water um, you know how in the world did he do that now we know he talks about faith there, there's something about believing there's something about when you really believe something it it's creative uh, and but even when things are creative like that we pray we, we believe uh, on things I mean I, I had a chicken literally and I'll have to take a picture of her and sh show it to you guys when she was young she was attacked by a wild animal uh, totally one of her eyes was completely ate now nothing left all we had was just a little white string hanging there the other eye was so badly damaged she went totally blind uh, I was afraid I was going to have to put her down because I didn't want her suffering like that. And after about three or four days, you know, I was at the verge of doing it. And I had another one that also was badly tore apart. Uh, and so instead, I, I thought, well, you know, I'm going to pray for her first and then I'll see uh, what happens. And, um, you know, and if she doesn't get better in that one eye that she has there, then I'll, I'll put her down. So I prayed for her. And within about two or three days, she had a brand new eye in the eye socket that was empty, that only had a white string hanging down on her cheek. She had a brand new eye. And the one that was badly mangled, she got a little bit of sight back in it, but it still stayed, you know, messed up. To this day, it's still messed up. But that one eye that's the brand new one, I, I'm like, I wish I did have before and after photos to prove it. But the thing is, is what is it? It was praying for her, cause something to happen christ come on the scene and did something for that animal you know just the fact our our voice our thoughts are so powerful and can be heard by our father our heavenly father and we don't know where how far away he is right but i don't know i, I can get into all kinds of things like this but i think this may explain because you got to remember you're dealing with entities and demons and things as well and they do traverse dimensions and and things of that world there i mean your very television that you can watch or radio that you listen to you go down in your car you turn on your radio you're not hooked to anything are you but yet you can hear the voice coming into your car through your speakers that that little box in your car has the ability to be able to pick up a signal and can recreate that voice and that sound right there in the car with you so science has gone a long way they can do that with pictures images you can you have your cell phone and watch a video. You can watch my video sitting in your car. No wires attached. And yet you can watch that, right? I mean, so it's really kind of nutty, all the things that we can do. Uh, and, you know, just scientifically nowadays. So, uh, but anyway, so he got in there. and he, But he was talking about, too, the density. And I don't quite understand all that. But he said it depends on how, what, what level you would be at the earth could be hollow or it could be as you perceive it the way science taught you in school a hollow a solid core things like that 
Um, I don't really understand that. I don't know how much of that would be true or not, but uh, it may explain to us so how these things are really happening. Or is it the fact that CERN is opening up portals? I know that one meeting I was in, we were discussing CERN, and they said that that was kind of what happened to Atlantis, that the they were given that technology, and basically these demonic entities, these aliens, uh, convinced the people of Atlantis to use it because they wanted to bring in other entities and it nearly destroyed the earth at the same time and of course sunk Atlantis, uh, the civilization that was in agreement to do that. And there's some type of classified documents that they have that they are that they know this information from that's never been released to the public. So I don't know. I, I do find it interesting. But anyway, I, I just want to share some of that stuff with you there uh, in light of what Steve Jackson put out on his program there. I thought that was fascinating. And uh, maybe later this evening I'll do a news broadcast bringing up the day on Ukraine. I'm also going to be doing a special broadcast. Uh, I haven't put it together yet about the spacecraft around Gulf Breeze, Florida. There's always That's always been a hotbed spot and I actually was briefed on what the people of Gulf Breeze, Florida are really seeing. So I'm going to do a special broadcast on Patreon for that. I don't know if I can do that today or not, but in the next day or so, we'll be sharing that information as well. Thank you for listening. And Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, and God bless you.